I don't know if we're gonna get Pike. I think if you don't grab it here, there's a high chance he gets banned in the second one. You are down 2-0. It is the number one pick for Fnatic and for Hillisang when they want to create something around bottom side. They're not gonna have a lot of fun against the solo laners. Instead, actually, Nemesis coming in with the Vagar. Vagar is very interesting because it's kind of hard to play off early on in the lane phase around your mid lane, and we've been talking up mid, jungle, and support uh, early on. However, the cage stun does provide a lot of value when you're setting up by those objectives and you try and bully off and, and create that big zone of control. And of course, Vega was used by Fnatic and Nemesis to take down SKT in the group stage. They went 5, 1, and 12. Phase two of bands very heavily targeted and that's a poor pool. Rakan, Tom Kent, you would imagine FBX would consider banning the pike as it was one of the picks that we're all looking to and it's a comfort that Hillisang would very much like to get in his hands. Exactly, unless they feel they can easily deal with Pike Kaiser as, as the duo on their side. Obviously on the side of Fnatic, they don't necessarily have to show support. They could still show top laner because they, they look at the two solo laners anyway on the FBX side, but I think the pike ban is smart. I think definitely in this kind of game here when Fnatic have to do something, take away the number one pick. So what is the bottom lane we're going to see from Fun Plus Phoenix? The Ooh, Bane like is this. gone, the TK is gone, and there's a hover for one right now. Why do you like it? I just think if you look at especially Renekton top lane, you need something that can actually stay alive and protect itself if you are about to get tower dive. It's a lot of scaling, though. This is so much scaling for Fnatic. I mean, to me, still screaming, we're going to play through bot side. We need something top that can stay alive and have value even if it falls behind. Orn can do that because of his old team, because of the item buffs. Yeah. But I still think we're going to see a playmaking support for Hillisang. That's why they are last picking. We highlighted this just before. They know the solo laners. They can last pick support and try and get a winning matchup bot. Yeah, and FPX, they see that much scaling on Fnatic's side, and they just go all in here. I think that no matter what the final pick is here for Fnatic, our early game is going to look like FBX with the first step. And can Fnatic outplay? Can they answer those moves? We're definitely expecting FBX to control around mid with Rek'Sai and Ryze or Renekton. And then Nemesis needs more time before he really starts having a lot of impact. It's not a roaming pick by any means. It's not the Twisted Fate as we have seen the last two. So we most likely will not see the same kind of aggressive early play. I think Fnatic might have said, listen guys, this early game is not working. We're not actually able to execute it properly. We are falling too far behind. The FPX, they, they have our number. Let's try and pack a little bit more team fighting in here. So you have a ton of engage, you have great CC, and you still have a scaling AD carry where Reckless can win you fights in the late game. So I think Fnatic's coaching staff decided, current plan, let's drop it. We know we can win late game team fights against FPX. Now we just have to get there. Exactly. Complete focus is on time. Can Fnatic buy that time? Quick shot, you were talking about your stats earlier. So far, there hasn't been much in this series. Nope, there has not. Two 25 minute victories for Fun Plus Phoenix. A 20 minute win will break the record of the fastest international BO5 now. The question is, can Fnatic delay long enough for not only their team composition to come online, but to prevent the record being broken, to keep their tournament hopes alive? Fun plus Phoenix are one win away from an all LPL showdown. Number one versus number three seed for a guaranteed LPL back-to-back -back World Finals appearance. And I'm really looking at both junglers here because Tian on the Rex side, he can be the one to really snowball the game, to make sure they have a winning mid lane matchup where they can then roam to the bottom side and set up plays with the Lucian and the Nautilus. While Broxa, he's kind of the bridge in the early game that has to get the team past the early laning phase. If he ends up falling behind here or if he's not able to actually pull off any sort of counter ganks, then suddenly FPX will have full control. Deficio, a game and a half ago, we talked a little bit about Broxa, his early game impact, the first half of groups, second half of groups. Is he going to be able to do it? We've seen the Lee back-to-back games. If he's going to be the bridge, there is a lot of pressure on this man who yes. seems to have struggled against Tian. Let me read something from his teammate then, quick shot. And it is from Reckless, his quote at the beginning of group stages. I also know when the tournament starts, everything that you've done before and every theory is out the window. 
And then it's just up to the people who can handle the pressure when they're up there on stage. There's no greater pressure on Fnatic than right now. And can Reckless and Fnatic live up to that quote and be that team? Well, do you remember a game ago, I talked about how much experience Fun Plus Phoenix have on this stage? The experience, the ability to step up when it counts. Let me show you how many international games Fnatic played before the two they've already accrued. Whippo 32, Broxa 56, Reckless 74 including World Semi-Finals appearances, World Finals appearances, Nemesis, the Stone Cold Killer, the only rookie to this stage. These numbers could stop right now if they don't find a way to extend the series. And they've been here before, a lot of the members at least. And I'm actually not concerned about Fnatic like mentally collapsing going into this kind of game. Uh, I think the change in strategy might be what they need, at least to feel comfortable going into the game, saying, okay, we don't have to snowball early game. We don't have to tower dive the bot lane as early as possible. We can actually play a little bit more relaxed and just focus on tracking Tian on the Rek'Sai. side. Yep, my focus is going to be on FPX here. Series in their hands. Oh, look at power spike again. Point. <laughs> Slightly different champion. Yeah, Whipple getting a nice trade off there. Grassbrock as well. See if they actually uh, reverse clear here for Tian, because you mentioned the Rek'Sai, level three now here, can head up, try and attack. Renekton Rek'Sai, incredibly potent in the 2v2, and Rek'Sai has so many pathways to try and affect that lane and get some early gold in the Renekton's hands. Yeah, we have the early ward down from uh, Whip up here in the top, and you see it in the brush, but as, as you highlighted, a lot of paths he can take around. Yeah to still get there and actually gank him. Broxa might path to topside now and actually be there to protect a potential uh, play. And talking about Broxa, we saw him clearing out his blue buff. It's the first time all series long where Fun Plus Phoenix and Fnatic did not contest the first blue spawn. So multiple times in a row that fight happening and Broxa seems to have snuck himself in here behind LWX and Chris. Yeah, you're sneaky at first, but then you pop that plant and everybody knows where you've been so OWX and Chris should be playing with an appropriate amount of respect. It's open up for top lane but Whipple right now should know my jungler's bot side I'm weak side I need to just step away until I have more information or backup so right now he can't actually push forward without getting risked, uh, without potentially dying to a gank. Exactly you can see him on the minimap hovering behind the minion wave because it's overextended there and he knows he has no pressure. This is allowing, oh, currently, focus. Tien on the Raptor camp to farm away. Meanwhile, LWX and Crisp just playing defensively under the tower. Can you proc the Aftershock here for Hillisang if you want to go for something? But there's very few minions. It's super risky. Yeah, there's no way you pull that dive off with these champions. Those are not super strong diving champions against full health enemies. Especially with all the CC and the kit of Crisp's Nautilus. The risk was simply too great. Uh, we catch a quick glimpse of Doom B teleporting back to lane. He's picked up that tier of the goddess already, Nemesis, using that Baleful Strike to try farm himself under the tower. And a few moments ago, Tian was at least hovering or sort of shadowing Gim Goon's lane up at the top. Doom B steps in, places that another ward down. And as it starts for now, no action in the early game. Big change from the earlier matches of the series. Exactly, but we'll keep seeing this, you know, Renekton pushing in. The Orn is like, yeah, it's fine. I'll build a few items here and there and get a bit of extra stats, and then you can't kill me that easily. And once you hit level 6 on Orn, it gets harder to dive him as well. But there's still an opening. Like, you can bring Rise, you can bring Rek'Sai, you will be able to, 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 to of course, shut him down. It's just about playing very defensive on, on top side for Fnatic, unless Brox is there to try and do something. But it's a very risky lane to gank. And I really do want to highlight that Tien didn't waste any time because Whippo's playing defensively and giving that respect on the weak side. Tien is hard farming. This Rek'Sai is opening up a very big farm lead. As you see there, that was the counter jungled Raptor camp that he did earlier. He's already a level ahead of Broxa, has the extra longsword from that back, and is looking to prey on this matchup. Always love this ward here. Uh, to try and see any potential like passing around it. People don't always check if it's actually there, so it gives you a lot of free information. And now we talked about focus around mid lane for F from FPX. Try and shut down Nemesis. All right, Event Horizon will come up. That will at least interrupt Tian for now. The teleport starts to channel. Nemesis flashes away defensively. So Wimb is now coming in. Reckless at level four uses the Akathian Rain. The wave is pushing away from him. 
but I think the TP saves Nemesis's life. And we'll need to see what impact this has on the remainder of the laning phase. Yeah, it does. Uh, and that was a rare case of Doon B ganking his own lane as the Rek'Sai was showing on the ward. Crisp has to run away to the Blast Cone, but should be fine. Now, if we return to that lane, this is a flashless Vagar, teleportless Vagar uh, that could definitely get rooted up. Fnatic will use the reset off of pressure, though, to get this dragon. Ooh, looking at the mini map. Now, there's no mana for Doom B, so he's just going to go for the plant. I got excited for a second, wondering whether or not Tien and Doom B wanted to consider the tower but dive. This is a dive we mentioned. If you That's bring it. multiple members, of course, you can take down the Orn here. Ulti is ready, can try and use it. All right, what can Pwipo do? Call of the Forge Guard is available. It is called. Can he get the knock up? No, it's interrupted. He can't bounce it back. Kim Goon and Tian double team while Doom B gets the assist, and that was beautifully done. Perfect timing here on the stun, but let's look at summoner spells. Two flashes used by FPX, one, of course, by Whipo. They do get the kill, but Fnatic still took a mountain drake. So it's a it's an expected trade when you have the Orn up top there against the Renekton. You will at some point die under your turret, but hopefully your team is getting something else where... Well, let's take a look. Yelisang now taking some damage. Broxa comes over the wall. The stun from the trample will land. No killer instinct for Reckless to follow up, but they get Crisp's flash. So that tower dive that Broxa was really fishing for earlier, now at least a little more believable. Yeah, we'll see how well they can hover under tower. LWX, good reactions there. He has the red buff. He was able to stay safe. Here's another look at the tower dive, though. And they know that Fnatic are on the bottom side, so no hesitation there on the flash. Doing B goes in. Yep. They know they can lock him up. Stun there, able to uh, lock him out. Yeah, just make sure he can't actually hit the ulti the second time around, and then he will die. Want to highlight uh, no TP used back to lane from Gimgun right here. He's actually saving it for potentially making a play on bottom side. They will have level six on the Nautilus very soon. So you have CC set up and then you can actually try and shut down Reckless or Hillisang. The other reason could also just be that, I mean, there wasn't really any reason for him to catch <laughs> yeah. like one minion basically. And then- It's a pretty good reason he to can, save. He can just save it anyway. So he's able to use his advantage now to apply pressure elsewhere by keeping the TP. Maybe later he decides to use it back to lane just for a bit more pressure. I'm going to keep my eyes on how Tian continues to impact this map. He's already done such an exceptional job, still a level ahead, healthy CS advantage. As now Helisang is going to look for LWX, very good headbutt, and pulverize under the tower. LWX almost winning the fight. He had that cutlass to work with, but Helisang played patiently. Yep, he gets him right into the tower. That is a key tower shot there. He gets him just into range to get the red buff back. Unfortunately, Helisang also got the kill credit, uh, but that is definitely a very big answer from Fnatic. He completely outplayed him, and I bet you, Someone on FX said, we got TP top, we're jungler on bot side, you can play aggressive. Come on, try and force a fight, you can play aggressive. And then he actually ignores the fact that Hillsen can sit in that little brush and then knock him into the turret. Big play here from Fnatic side. They were not supposed to get anything bot lane and they just got a kill. Absolutely the case, Fnatic are still a thousand gold down, but all credit to Hilly. Yeah, look at the patience there, because he needs every bit of distance just into tower range, then goes for the flash to make sure they have enough damage to finish off before Reckless goes down. Look at the picture and picture though, Gimgoon! Wait, is this a run. solo kill? Pwipo's trying to chase him down, but I think Gimgoon should oh. be able to escape. Oh. The Searing Charge will not find his target, and Gimgoon Goon lives to fight another day. Can't believe he almost died right there. Let's see what happens. Bot Hillisang is looking for something. It's FPX invading on blue buff. We keep mentioning they have to TP. They can use it on bottom side if they want to, so they know there's a chance of a numbers advantage. All He's right, using it back to lane now. Take a look at the TP going top. Whippo, ultimate and TP on cooldown. Reckless and Hilly. Man, there's so many FPX members looking <laughs> to chase them down. Hilly. It looked like he was kind of going fishing himself as Nemesis and Broxa made their way down. But I want to go back to that on point really quickly during draft. You both said that pick had to just survive lane, had to scale. And Fnatic are nearly even in goal. The 10 minutes, the trading one for one, it's looking okay for now. Yeah, it's looking okay. I said before we went live here, Orn is broken, man. Just pick <laughs> Just uh, you, you always have value in the game with your ulti and the fact you make your other carries better as well. All right, let's start up this rift out here. It looks like they do know there was an early recall. As you can see on the minimap, Crisp is going from base. Crisp will be there first, and support uh, desync recalls mean FBX should definitely be able to finish this. Whipple also going back to base. Fnatic are seeding the Rift Herald over. That should get turned into turret plates. There's plenty of yeah. time for FPX. 
and they can work off of either of those solo lanes to try and get full value out of that objective. So this should further propel that early game that they're looking for. But now they can definitely try and play almost every single lane uh, with, with the current setup they have. I do like the armor stacking, of course, as well on the orange top side. You're against Rek'Sai and Renekton. So just try again to make it as hard as possible for them to actually kill you on the turret so they decide to go somewhere else. And the big difference in that matchup comes when you complete your Spear of Sojin. Uh, Gim Whoa, bottom side engage. All right, that's the engage plus the ignite. So Stopwatch will at least get proc. So Hilly's going to be happy already. TP. Teleports, that's traded one for one. Nautilus Ultimate knocks Reckless up into the air. Now Hilly trying to escape. Nemesis lands the event horizon, but do it be almost survives. Elder X is running for his life. There's the engage from Hilly's sack. That's a double kill for Fnatic. Is traded one back as Tien gets the reply and Broxa arrives a little late to the party. Vagar coming up big for Fnatic again. Nemesis answers the teleport and that stun is on point. They finish off to B and that is two kills as LWX got chased down because of the glacial augment. Now it's going to be turned into dragon number two and this time around it is double mountains for Fnatic looking towards that Baron setup. The show you had talked about the teleport advantage for FPX for a while, but Nemesis's response was fantastic. Obviously, Renekton used the back to lane earlier, yep. so now it was just a one-for-one -one trade. The difference is, one guy is actually TPing in extremely offensively here right now. He's way behind the enemy lines, and he just instantly gets stunned. Tien could not get in in time to actually make it a four versus three. We're looking mid lane. We are indeed. Oh, call of the Forge God manages to lock up Tien. He's got flash available to him, but he can't get out. Brox is on the board. Fnatic, four kills to two. 500 gold up, two mountain drakes, and the event horizon locks in crisp. Sonic Wave finds a target of Fnatic. They survived the early game, but this is the start of an advantage they cannot throw away. Oh, top lane, they're right. fighting again. Gim Goon is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Buipo. Sun fight, Kate. This could be one of those wet noodle fights that we used to watch years and years ago. <laughs> yeah, Gim Goon. Charge. Gim Goon never got to complete his Spear of Sojin, so that's why Buipo can Look try to take here, those though. again. Fnatic, they know they have a numbers advantage. They also have members in the jungle. They get another one. Nemesis knows the ranges here on Vagar so well. Oftentimes we'll see people misplacing with the stun, but he sets it up with the GLP, with the extra glacial augment slow, finds the stun, he finds another kill with the pick on the do and B. All right, 2,000 gold in the lead. Listen to the Spanish fans in the Palacio Vista Alegre. They are losing their minds because for the first time, all series Fnatic are looking pretty good as we approach the 15 minute mark. They've got a tower, they've got yep. dragons, and they've got a comp that scales well, but there is still no margin for error. Very true, but it seems a bit easier for Fnatic now that they don't feel forced to do anything super aggressive all the time. Now looking bot side here. Just as you say that Deficio, super aggressive. Whippo teleporting to the oh, bot lane. Plates. Top lane has been conceded. The plates have just timed out as well. So Gim Goon and Tian, they're gonna be pushing top. The teleport will allow Fnatic to pick up the tower in the bottom lane. That should be the third, sorry, correction, that was the second outer turret. And as it stands, not quite sure the TP I'd call worth, but it does at least open up that part of the map. I mean, they force enemy bot lane to give up the turret, so they trade at least one for one there. Ooh. Oh, he got him. All right, Primordial Burst did a lot of damage, but it wasn't enough to kill Crisp. Not at this stage. Yeah. Um, still working on AP different Nemesis. And Whippo didn't have cooldown on ultimate. If you see Call of the Forge God very close to coming back off, they could have chased down if you had access to that, but not there, so they let him walk away. Now, obviously, Fnatic had superior side lanes if we look at the last two games where they could actually try and play 1-3-1. One, one. In this game here, when you have the Renekton and the Rise, we are looking more at FPX trying to control that, and Fnatic obviously wants to group S5 and team fight, but they still can hold the lanes very, very easily. And especially the, the Orn here just stacking, you know, early armor. They've been able to 1v1 the Renekton so far. Not gonna be as fun anymore with the first item completed for Gim Goon. And now you have to respect the all in a bit more. We take quick stock of the itemization, as you mentioned, plus 20 CS. Gim Goon in the mid lane, doing B takes a lot of damage. Primordial Burst still available. Pretty even CS across the map says now Gim Goon will pick up the second tower of the game for Fun Plus Phoenix. There's a mid lane setup. Call of the Forge God is available for Buepo every time he's around. Just hold my breath for the engage, the long range that will allow Kaiser to come jumping in as well. 
So Reckless was making his way mid instead. Gonna peel away and get some damage into this mid inner turret. Yeah, and they've got a lot of vision here supporting that pressure on top side. Reckless can go in with the extra attack speed. They calling in the rest of the team here to force it down. It should be a trade. You see Rise there on the mini map going for the split push for FBX. Put up the cage. is very good from Nemesis. Killer Instinct comes up from Reckless, but it didn't commit the primordial boost. Uh, burst, rather. Tian is able to escape. It cost him his flash. Fnatic are pushing on two lanes. Top has been saved for now. Middle is now under pressure. There's the call of the Forge God. Event Horizon comes out, but very good flash away. Kim Goon does go down. The tower will fall. Nemesis is in trouble. Doing B has not stopped the push in the bottom lane, though. This is what we talk about again. Fnatic, they want to stay together. They're just playing around two lanes only, not three. They have control in enemy jungle. They know everything that's happening around mid and top lane. They didn't want to overextend for any turret, but they were just fishing. The moment you land the stun with Nemesis, you can then go all in. And it's super hard for, for FPX to defend. They can't actually wave clear against the Vagar. We are highlighting for Fnatic, grouping up and using their team composition to its fullest. They beat SK Telecom by defending early and then grouping up with the Vagar, chasing people down with these long range engages. The slows coming through to set up stuns. And it's very important to highlight that typically, if you play a team fight comp against split push, once the map is set up and they're pushing all the lanes, it's very difficult to do something unless you can hard engage around a mid lane or around an objective. And Fnatic can always engage. They have Alistar, they have Orn. There's no Braum to block the Orn ulti or anything. They can always start a fight, and that is how you punish teams who want to split up the map. Oh, Here they go. Take a look at this. Well, the Forge Guard's not available, but it might not even be needed. Trample's available as well. Killer Instinct's on cooldown from Reckless. Until a few seconds ago, everybody on FPX had no flash available, and Fnatic had all of theirs. They picked up the Cloud Drake. Baron will be spawning in two minutes' time, and Fnatic still have a 2,000 gold lead, but it is so crucial to keep your eyes on doing B because he has gone unanswered in the split push, but at least Fnatic are equaling cross map. They're gonna trade here. Doing B and Tien are not going to stop. Fnatic are at the door as well. Inhibitor turret under attack. FPX are new to the international stage. You don't want to base race against Fnatic. There is no team in the world with more experience at base races. The inhibitor is being forced down. It is being taken in the bottom Can lane. Can they find them We're in their base? To the base race. All of the Forge God has come out. Teleport's being used. Event Horizon's going down. Fnatic, can you win the fight? Doom B is joining the fray. Hellasen goes deep with the ultimate. Reckless jumps in with the killer instinct. LWX is down. Brox is looking for Crest. He finds him. It's at the cost of Hellasen's life. There's another one down as Kim Goon is taken out. The next start is the next focus. And yeah, no minions, sadly, for Fnatic here. They do pick up the kills. They wanted to force the recall from top lane. Inip did not die top side, so Fnatic gets an in-hit bot. No minions, but they got plenty of champions in that one. Three kills for Fnatic. 12 stacks on the Soul Stealer for Nemesis. And this game is wide open for them. It's so key that this is also much simpler for Fnatic to execute yes. this time around. Fnatic did not have to set up any early tower dives. They didn't need to hard camp a lane to try and get ahead. They could play a lot slower in the early game and react to what FPX were trying to do on the map. Double Mountain Drake, Baron spawning very soon. And so important to note that FPX were 2-0 up in the series. Baron hasn't even spawned. We've very got 12 soon. kills in the game. The Nexus turret was being sieged. But you know and what's going to happen when it spawns. Fnatic will set up vision, then FPX will try and face check, and then they will die. The thing that I really like is the confidence for Fnatic being down 0-2 in a series to still push the Nexus. That tells you a lot about their mental state right now. And it makes me excited for the rest of this game. And with some luck, the next game in the series. I want more of this series. And Fnatic are now setting up that vision, Kobe, that Deficio talks about, and setting up for a Baron play. Yeah, it looks like you are definitely in store for some more. Fnatic have full control of Baron. They're burning it down. Pupo's under attack. He is indeed Call of the Forge God is not available to him. Event Horizon has come up. Whippo manages to escape it. Chris survives the primordial boost. Now the Nautilus ultimate knocks Nemesis in the air. Baron will just about get secured. Super minions are pushing in the whole oh, lane. Now. That's a massive engage! Fnatic from downtown! Send FPX back 
to base. The gray screen is up for Tien and Crisp. And with Baron empowered super minions about to crisp the steps of the LPL's base, Fnatic are looking to pick up their first win of the series. Nemesis is fighting LWX in the bottom. The rest of Fnatic are picking a fight in the bottom lane as well. Helisang goes golden against Doing B. And he stays <laughs> alive just a few seconds longer. The Baron empowered minions are now chasing oh, Nemesis. The looking stone. for the solo kill. Not going to find it, but the Q does. The Nexus turrets have fallen. Teleports are coming into the base. FBX are doing what they can to survive, but there's not enough available. There's Doggy. not enough to fight. But look at this. Tia and Doobie, they turn around. I couldn't be more wrong. Bwepo's in trouble. The Realm Warp will allow them to continue the chase. And Brox is running for his life. Fnatic thought they had done it, but Doobie B holds on to the game for FBX. He takes down Hillisang in the 1v1 and the then defends. Super carry of the LPL steps up when FBX have their backs against the Nexus. Three, two, and four. And Doobie B oh. on the rise keeps the game alive. It looked like all of Fnatic had gotten individual missions there after they had taken the Baron. But, okay, yeah, Deficio, there is a ward in the base. Possible teleport Fnatic situation. You want Reckless to go for it? I'm just saying he yes. can. If, if FPX decide to walk out, contest, let's say, a Drake <laughs> or something, the opening is there. Do they know? They do know. They know. <laughs> Oh, well, I love the crowd noise, by the way, when that ward goes down, you can actually hear the pain from Spain. And we reset, and this is the replay of this final Nexus like, push. No. I was convinced in this one we replay, Fnatic, we're going to win. You guys tell me what's going on with all these uh, chase downs here for Fnatic. <laughs> well, they wanted the Nexus turrets first, but then they realized behind them right now, there's actually still a bunch of turrets, and there's a very, very strong rise. I think Doing B playing it perfect, staying out of range, flashes out a cage as well, so he can just keep dealing damage. And now the rest of the team will join. And of course, Reckless ends up in the middle of the entire team and, and will go down. So for now, FPX, they stay alive. Yeah, we will see if that lapse in judgment from Fnatic, you know, the lack of coordination finishing out the game or discipline actually ends up costing them. You can it should see, not. You can it's see it's a spike here, but as you're saying, it should still be five members of Fnatic, one Nexus left. Of course, it's still a 2,000 gold game. We're 23 minutes in. These games have been so quick, have been so action-packed. My eyes are going to be on Doon B. He's got no flash available to get out of the event horizon this time around. And the lanes, not necessarily the strongest. Here we go. And top pushing towards Fnatic. The Realm Warp sends Chris into the back line. Call the Forge God comes out. That sends Chris flying. Reckless is in trouble as Gungum is running him down. Now, the first one to fall is Chris. Nemesis does get taken out. So does Reckless. All of a sudden, Fnatic's fight has floundered. Broxa tries to get something back as Tion's running for his life. He's got the Guardian Angel available. That was such a good engage. Can get more. They can just now. That's a GA has been proc. The Brox and Hillisang run for their lives. Perfect setup right here. Rise ult and it's only the Nautilus taking it so he can in some point on click ult onto Reckless who's about to get flanked by Renekton who can pop everything and take him down. Suddenly Fnatic did not have the consistent DPS to kill the rest of F FPX and this Rise just never dies in his eyes. Look at this here. This is the setup they want. Oh, he actually gets knocked in by Hillisang. Yep. He actually headbutted yep. him in. That was, it just felt like there was, the coordination wasn't there for them. Meanwhile, FBX just hunt and kill here. Tian takes the ultimate, finishes off ne Nemesis. On the left side of your screen, LWX escapes with his life on the Lucian. Kites back to the fountain to then come out for round two as they finish up the last kill. Gentlemen, five minutes ago, I said how much I love the mentality of Fnatic pushing the Nexus at 18 minutes. I would like to That's retract. I love anymore. I would like to retract that statement right now. And look at how they can set some of these fights up because it is clear that Doon B and Gim Goon, they still have a lot of fight in them despite being marginally behind the goals. 100%. I think FPX done a fantastic job defending their base. Also removed so many stacks from Nemesis. But if you are a fanatic, you can still wait for next Baron spawn. You still have the double mountain set up. You have amazing engage, especially when the enemy team is forced to kind of like move in towards you through the river, where it's hard to dodge around to get away from an one ulti. So Fnatic can slow down a little bit. We're still only 25 minutes in. I, it, they don't have to finish the game instantly. 
And they still have great scaling on their side. Look at this, the Ornn items coming in, getting upgraded. Like, Nemesis still deals a ton of damage. Super quick, uh, Nemesis is currently at 736 ability power. He's farmed 212 additional AP throughout the course of this game and will continue to scale. We saw how quickly he obliterated those waves in the mid game. So the defensive play is very, very strong for him. All right, for FPX, because they're still in a, such a hard spot here. Baron number two coming up is so big for Fnatic. They're right now, they just need to get vision control over this Baron area and you will force FPX into you. All right, Kim Gin's gonna flash all the way forward. Reckless isn't there. He's starting to teleport and join the fray. He will get in behind. Call the Forge God has already been used, and Gim Gun is pushed underneath the tower. Kim Gun stays alive. The promotional burst picks up the kill. Now, where's the engage? Killer Instinct is available for Reckless. I'm waiting to see when he uses it. Helisang is in some trouble. Gets a three man knockup. Reckless is chasing forward. Nautilus Ultimate knocks him up into the air. He dives forward. Reckless's shield keeps him up, keeps him alive, keeps him pushing forward. Gets him a double. Looking for the triple. Doing B is the last man standing, and he flashes is away to safety fanatic give this man respect because he is scary the super soaker slows him down and it's reckless that sends him packing for the ace that's gotta be it fanatic four strong in the fpx space one inhibitor down and the nexus to follow this series isn't over yet the fanatic faithful find their first win Gentlemen.